Here we go. Break the ring. No. What'd you do? Are you fucking off here? Yep. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. This episode of Breaking Down the Ring is brought to you by Chala Legal Group Estate Planning. Estate planning is for everyone. Whether you're worth $4,000 or $40 million, estate planning can help protect you, your family, and your assets while you're alive and well. To register for an upcoming workshop today, go to chalalegal.com slash workshops or call 586 573-7157. Again, that's chalalegal.com slash workshops or call 586-273-7157. We are fucking live. Better late than never. We got a lot of shit to talk about. Sorry we're late. We're like 20 minutes late. We had a lot of shit to discuss before the show. We've got NXT to talk about, the TakeOver in Toronto. We've got SummerSlam. We've got just all kinds of shit happening in the wrestling world. But we are here, and we're going to fucking break it down for you right now. I've got no Mikey, though, so who knows what's in store. But get ready, because we're about to... Professional wrestler and professional podcaster Colt Boom Boom Cabana. My name is Killer Cross. This is the Smoke Show, Scarlet Bordeaux. What's up, guys? The After Machine, Brian Cage. This is Ryan from Pro Wrestling Tees. Sadly, you are not listening to the art of wrestling, but you made a decent choice because you're listening. You are now listening to. And you're listening. And you're listening to. You listen to Breaking Down the Ring. 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 Break it down. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. What's up, everybody? We're here live. No Mikey, which is really weird because that doesn't happen too often. Um, But we've got a lot of shit to talk about nonetheless. We had SummerSlam weekend with all the festivities and shenanigans that happened there. Um, Yeah, man, just a lot of shit. I can't even spit it all out because there's so much crap to talk about. We had NXT TakeOver, uh, the 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 G1 Climax ended. Um, I don't want to hear about your Climax. Yeah, my name is not G1. Nobody does. But at any rate, we are your ring crew. Uh, (coughs) Mikey is here. Hi. Hey, Mikey. Mikey. Yeah, I'm Smitty. Now, see, that's Smitty. I'm the whole effing Joe. (laughs) Bastards. (laughs) I'm going to take my identity. And I'm Znick, and uh, yeah. No, that really has nothing to do with your ID. That's that's something else. (laughs) So... Z, I gotta say, it's nice to see you back from nature, and you know all that, and that you're alive still, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm... He was in forest, not me. No, <laughs> First day we got out there, <clears throat> we're uh, we're walking to our campsite, and as you guys know, like the lake levels around here. Is this somehow wrestling related? No, but <laughs> you're, it's about how I almost died, no. so you'll like it. Um, <laughs> We're walking through the path to get back to our campsite. It's like real rustic, you know? Just swarmed. I mean, I had, you can see all like little bumps and shit on my skin covered from every inch of my body, head to toe, and mosquitoes. That was like, Ew. I had to carry two things back there and we left. Sounds awesome. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that place. Good camp. Yeah, that, that was my side cast for the night. Right, excellent. Well, so aside from that, um, camping sounds fun. I went camping two weeks ago. That was a shit show. Um, white fucking white people. <laughs> <laughs> Only people that pay to be homeless. That's right. 
We did have electricity, and I'm too See, posh for all I was, that. I was, I was more homeless than. I'd rather do what we're doing, you know. I'm, 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 I'd rather go the ho- hotel route, you know. Why am I gonna like go out of my way to live primitively when I have all the luxuries? Do, do you glamp? Are you a glamper? You know, one day I don't Joe, even know what that is. Okay. You go daughter, comp- your daughter's cabins. gonna grow up. Or she's gonna want to go camping, and you're gonna do it. I won't even. I won't even let her know what camping is. <laughs> she won't even know that, that's, that it that's exists. The, that's the way to go about it. Um, so we did uh, have a lot going on this weekend. It all started with NXT Takeover Toronto on Saturday night. Um, really big event. NXT for me didn't disappoint as usual. Um, you know there were some ups and downs as there always are. Um, with that show, we had uh, the NXT Championship. It was two out of three falls with Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano. Um, NXT Women's Championship match, Shayna Baszler and Mia Yim. North American title between Velveteen Dream, Pete Dunne, and Roderick Strong. Matt Riddle and Killian Dane were there. Got some points for that. I think we all kind of got points for that. Uh, Io Shirai and uh, Candice LeRae won a grudge match, and then there was also the tag team championships between the Street Profits, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era. Um, for me, yeah, it was, it was a great pay-per-view. There were a couple things that we'll get into that I wasn't too thrilled with, Joe. I, I agreed with some of the things you said in the chat. Um, I don't like to finish at a uh, tag title match either. So well, let's start with that. Why, why didn't you like that? What, what was wrong? Uh, it, like, I'm, I'm all right with a dusty finish here and there. But um, with the, with the promise, the street promise posting to be the supposing to be the baby face of this feud, them getting a shaky win like that just kind of, I, I don't know, I just kind of irked me the wrong way. And yes, I complain about the black guys. Wow, chew on that mayonnaise. <laughs> um, Joe, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what about you? What what do you think of that match? Uh, I liked it. The finish didn't bother me as much. I I thought they were. I thought it was a little clunky. Like now, I I remember when Mikey said something about uh, the Street Profits' work rate, and I was like, "What are you talking about? They, you know, they got they're great athletes. They they can do a lot in the ring." No. Now I can kind of see what he means because they can do high spots, but they can't work like undisputed. Right. So, I I get that, and so I I think. I think they didn't have, I mean, because undisputed. I mean, that's that's like catch wrestling. That's yeah. That's mat wrestling. That's what do they call it? Catch as catch can or whatever. Mm-hmm. Street profits can't hang with that. You know, they're they're flash, they're flop, they're fly, and they're entertaining. But I just don't think those two teams Damn. meshed meshed well. But that being said, it was still I still enjoyed it overall. I mean, I didn't think it sucked. I just think. It was a little clunky, and they just didn't have the greatest chemistry, but I still thought it was a pretty good match. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it, too. I did like the high spots, but, you know, again, like you were saying, they, they can't put in the time and, and work the way that a team like Undisputed Era can. I mean, it was pretty evident, but it was an entertaining match. Uh, Z, did you watch? You watched TakeOver, right? Did yeah, you, yeah? Okay. every bit of it. In silence, so I have no mm-hmm. idea what the commentary was saying. <laughs> um, or, or no. No, I thought it was. I thought it was a good match. I mean, I saw the contrast in styles, just like you guys did. So for good as matches, it could be with the uh, contrast of styles there. But luckily, the Street Profits are young, and hopefully, they can learn to be adaptable because then it would make them like overall great tag team. Because they have everything else, they just don't have the experience. I mean, from what I see, yeah. So, I hope we do get some more of the the street profits and see them evolve over time and 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 maybe turn into something that's actually worthwhile. But we got good promo know. skills. I actually yeah. see it every week. I had, them, I had them dropping the titles because I thought they were just going to call them up to raw permit. I yeah. could see I could see Montez Ford getting a big singles push somewhere down the line. He's mm-hmm. got a lot of charisma. Now Angelo but Angelo Dawkins needs for because. Angelo Dawkins was floundering on NXT for the that's better the thing part though. Of a decade Ford don't need Dawkins. Correct. Just like the nation didn't need D'Lo Brown. Was they, with the Street Profits, they're still a duo. And I think that Ford brings out the better part of Dawkins. It's bringing out the best in Dawkins. Yeah, but I, I think Ford is the star of the team. 
And I think eventually, eventually, somewhere down the line, he's going to get a, a solid singles push. If, if I Dawkins had to compare Janetti, Ford, yeah, I was going to say Ford is Shawn Michaels and Angelo Dawkins is Marty Janetti. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the Janetti. <laughs> Nobody, man. <laughs> Not even Marty Janetti wants to be Marty Janetti, man. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, moving on. <laughs> it's true. It's damn true. Poor Marty Janetti. Fuck him. Um, the next match was Io Shirai versus Candice Lorraine, a grudge match. Um, it was a pretty solid match. I kind of like Io Shirai as, as a heel. Uh-huh. Um, that, I'm, that was uh, I miss her, her old baby face wrestling outfit, though, where you could see, like, her thighs. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But yeah, she's something else. She makes yeah. my penis not soft. Yeah, I saw a lot of comments like that. She <laughs> makes my penis not soft. <laughs> she makes my penis unsoft. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was a good solid match too. And I what actually what the hell was that submission she used? That was pretty. I, I liked it. Yeah, um, I like couldn't even tell you what the name Koji was. Koji Clutch but. or something. Yeah, that's what they called it. But she held that it is, for a while. Yeah, but that's, that's WWE. What what's the real name of it? Yeah. Yeah, it was another solid match. Um, the the North American Championship that ended up being a, another really good match. Um, Dream well, versus Duh. Look Pete Dunne and Roger Strong. <laughs> right. Well, hey, you know, um, I actually picked Velveteen Dream to win that one so on the I. scorecards. I picked Pete Dunn. Um, I don't know who Dunn was there either to make sure he didn't take a fall, to make sure Dream didn't take a fall. Or... I, well, I had that match completely opposite. I had Pete Dunn winning. By pinning Velveteen Dream when mm-hmm. Dream won by pinning Pete Dunn. Yep. But yeah, another great match on the NXT card. Um, the Women's Championship match, I don't know. That was probably one of the weaker matches on the card for me. Shayna Baszler beating uh, Mia Yim. Um, that had a couple of good spots. Uh, yeah, there. I mean, it wasn't bad by any means, but you know, I did get a little bored for a couple minutes. I don't know. Joe, what did you think? I wanted to see Mia Yim win that thing. Yeah, yeah me too. Everybody wanted, I think everybody wanted to see Mia Yim win, but that that's why I think she's probably going to take it. I, I, I actually, li- I actually kind of like that series. match. I heard a lot of people dogging that match. Uh, a lot of people saying maybe, you know, putting a lot of the blame on why they didn't like the match on Mia Yim. Like, she's not at the caliber of, of Shayna Baszler yet. I, I disagree wholeheartedly. I think Mia Yim's fucking awesome, actually. I think... I think she would have been a great choice to take that title off of mm-hmm. Baszler, and I was actually rather disappointed that didn't happen. Yeah, I even though I did like, longer. even though I did pick Baszler on the scorecard because obviously she's a favorite. I I wanted him to win like a lot, yeah. so um, yeah. I was just disappointed really in who won. And the thing about Yim is like. Yim once again, it's like she's one like what uh, Z said about street pop. She's one of those younger talents that is still. She's not that young, man. She's no. been around a minute. She's yeah. been around a minute. I, I watched when she was still in Shimmer and shit. Yeah. But, well, uh, yeah. So she's got experience outside of WWE. The Street Profits are like WWE born and raised. Yeah. Those are homegrown. Those are PC products. Yep. Yeah. Like, like Yim, I don't know if I'm just biased about Yim, but. Uh, I wanted her to win too. Why? Because she's hot. Well, most of the women on NXT are hot, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really thought that she might win. I picked Baszler, but then I was like, "Man, Baszler's had this title for That's my a point. minute." Yeah, you know, I lost my point. Damn. So, but I don't go know. to your notes. Go to your notes. <laughs> but, Pull them out. Yeah, yeah. I think they're gonna have Yim fall. Shout out Chase Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. We gonna wait till we get to, the, to, to some some more the stuff right there before I get into my notes. Um, the two out of the th- two out of three falls match for the NXT Championship with Adam Cole, baby, baby. and Johnny Gargano. Stipulations changed between the first fall, second fall, third fall. First fall was the classic wrestling match. Um, which went 26 minutes. Really Did anybody hour? have 26 minutes for that first Fuck fall? Fuck no. I had the whole match going half an hour. So did I. I had the whole match going 32 minutes, and it went uh, over, 59 over minutes. An hour. Mikey said, don't pull anything out. So please, for the love of God, don't. Maybe. I'll think about it. He's used to not pulling out. Actually, I am. I'm the only one here. To, one of the only two people here that don't have children. 
He's used to that not didn't... pulling out. <laughs> and you just said I'm you are. I'm going to say it again. He's used to not pulling out. And then he goes, actually, yeah, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. I got tons of kids out there I don't take care of. <laughs> not that I know of. But, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that was a really good match, uh, the two out of three falls match. Um, you know, this being Cole Gargano 3, um, what I was saying earlier is what Joe brought up in the, the cage fucking whatever fucking you want to call the last fall death match asylum. Um, the, sh- the, no, what, the no surrender cage match. You know, I used to get excited when I'd see a bunch of weapons like that come out. Like, okay, you know, this shit's going to get real. And now I'm just kind of like, eh, because you know it's not going to fucking matter. You know what I mean? Like on the WWE. Yeah. So that that was my letdown is the fact that they had you thinking, oh, well, they've got this sledgehammer and whatever else there may have been hanging from the cage. Sledgehammer is one of the dumbest weapons yeah. ever carried around in wrestling. Because it's not believable. I mean, no one swings it the way Triple H <laughs> swings it, like putting his hand over the actual oh. hammer part and then. You know, using it like a pool cue <laughs> rather than <laughs> swinging it like a sledgehammer, like how it's meant to, you know, it's just well, dumb. We've, we've seen it's them like, do it. They just miss. Everything. Why don't you just yeah. come down in the ring with a fucking gun? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Well, Pillman did that. Right. <laughs> well, at least he was at home, you know. Um, But, okay, now I understand that your point. That was a little side castle. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> your whole point of view, Joe, is that if you're going to give it a gimmick like that, it, there should be blood. I wasn't, it knows I wasn't upset blood. that there wasn't blood because, quite honestly, until you brought it up, I didn't even think of it. Uh, but dude, I was upset, like you said, that there. not only is there barbed wire that literally at one point Johnny takes a piece he off. He cut a piece off and yeah. then, like, did absolutely nothing with it. It did right? absolutely nothing with it. But then, like, you're looking around the ring and there's, like, Chairs and kendo sticks, fire extinguishers, random shit like attached to the cage. Yeah, I don't like that. That's fucking. I, I don't either. Stupid. That, it reminds yeah. me of that hokey. That's like a Dean yeah. Ambrose asylum match. It, that exactly so, or mixed like, with the Pujani like a prison match, Halloween match with Pujani pumpkins what? around the ring or something. Oh, I yeah. remember that. That's from fucking stupid. yeah, like a Halloween havoc match. Um, but if shit don't happen organically, it shouldn't happen. But until you pointed it out, then none of that bothered me. I was like, oh, that was really like that was really good. I can't believe these really, two went an hour. Like, I was complete as soon as uh, Regal made that announcement on the pre-show, and then they showed the cage with the barbed wire at the top. I was like, God damn it, Vince already has his hand in. This. That's exactly <laughs> what I, I was like. I was like, I Vince swear to God, his hand up the puppet's ass again. I was like, I swear to God, if both these guys are just not like both wearing the crimson mask, both bloody messes by the end of this thing. I'm going to be disappointed. One of them. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That, it's like that you one. have something that is but I don't implying why. that much violence. You should portray that much violence. Yes. I, I, well, like I said, didn't think about it. You brought it up. Once you brought they could have just had like, a cage you know, without all the weapons and without yeah. the barbed wire. I wouldn't have said a fucking word. I'd yeah. just drop the hell on a cell on and call it a day. Now. I don't know. Man, that's. Wouldn't that even have been. What? I guess. That would have been a first for NXT, too. First NXT Hell in a Cell. They're, they're saving that for something. Well, now that now that Vince is involved, it'll be next week. Yeah. <laughs> um, I Mitch the Potted Plant makes its return. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Only with Fandango, the lyric. <laughs> right. right hey, stop. Brazil goes back at NXT, and they're awesome. And, uh, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Smitty ruined my train of thought. God damn it, Smitty. God damn you always it. fuck everything up. Uh, we were fuck talking. You. We were talking about the cage and the structure and the you know the weapon. The lack well, yeah, of but use o- of the overall weapons. that match was the match was great, incredible. That's why I said like I know you guys Just, when I first said that probably thought I didn't like the match. I'm like no, dude, I love the match. But no, like, I, I didn't I need that saying. shit. I want, I want yeah. like Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes inside of a steel cage match, blood. Just the whole mat. Just Cody and right. Dustin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean if. Otherwise, don't have barbed wire. You could have simply not had barbed wire. No one would be talking about this shit. Because trust me, I guarantee you, I'm not the only one that fucking is saying this shit. True. When I went back and watched it, I, I saw what Joe was pissed off about too. I'm like, hmm. yeah, you made this structure seem so violent, and it was same so everything was so tame yeah, within that, all that fucking last part. decoration. Yeah, it, yeah. But the the other thing is, they called it a no escape cage match, but clearly you could have escaped. 
the door was still there. Yeah. Well, then they had barbed wire on the top, but all he had snips. He could have, yeah, he could have snipped himself a pathway oh, out. Oh, I'm going to take these scissors that are hanging right over here. Right, on this so cage. conveniently. Wow, it's like that was almost planned. <laughs> On their tin snips too, perfect. See, that last part of that match. And the barbed wire didn't even have any barb. That's what I. That's why. <laughs> if you notice in the chat, <laughs> I called it unbarbed wire. Yeah. I'm like, where are the fucking barbs? They're, they're and what few ones there were, they were like rounded off at, at oh, the yeah. tips and shit. Like, dude, this is stupid. Because I was like, I was watching the match again. I didn't have sound, so I didn't know like any of this was announced or anything like that. So I'm watching. I'm like, oh, he's grabbing the the, the barb. What what the fuck is that? Like chicken wire just wrapped around? Like <laughs> it was yeah, it was a fucking waste. The last yeah. part of that match was an insult to your intelligence. You know what though? Also though, I'm 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 saying before I heard Joe's thing that I I liked that match. I also didn't hear them telling me how violent this match was, so I didn't <laughs> think anything. You know what I mean? Oh, Regal made this big like dramatic announcement like. There was just impending doom coming, and then they yeah, okay. showed so the structure. They showed the cage, and they showed the barbed wire, and they showed all the weapons thrown about. And I was like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, motherfucker, dude! I was like, I was like, if they're BK, they can't, they can't do what needs to be done in this match. So why even fucking have it? Well, I well why say, couldn't they do it though? Because I mean, because like, like NXT is not on the network or well, not. Cause it, but it's a WWE TV. mandated fucking thing. But for there's Vince been, down. There's been blood in NXT before. Not like that. Well, it's like the only weapon that really fucking I don't even want to use. But the word, NXT matters. is your older crowd anyway. Th- they're using a fucking kendo stick like it's going out of style. Like that's the only weapon. Well, that maybe a chair. Really, maybe a chair. But like, I, I got to say, while I do enjoy somebody getting their ass beat with a kendo stick, it is getting a little stale. You know what I mean? And that's not just WWE. A lot that's of with anything. Are doing it too. If you if you see it every once in a while, you know, it's exciting, it's fresh. Right. I mean, you could be that's why I'm not like in a death match wrestling like someone going into light tubes like whoa, that's crazy. But yeah. then you watch someone going into light tubes on every fucking show, eventually it becomes old hat and you're like, "Oh, these fuckers just can't work." Correct. You know. Like uh so if you overdo anything, it's going to get stale and boring and old hat. Well, those are yeah. like the only two weapons you can really have to work safely with. Yeah. Just hit somebody across the back. Sasha Banks knows a little bit about that. Yeah, Sharon. well, she we'll, hit uh, back in the back of the head. Oh, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, but overall, it was a good show. It was a good pay-per-view. NXT never fails to disappoint on their, their takeover events. Um, I wish yeah. that they would maybe add another match to the... Because usually, anytime I've ever seen it, five matches. What is five matches this time? Was it? Yeah, there was. Every time, five yeah. matches. There's let's five see. matches. Right, but let's see another match. What's that? You know what I mean? Let's see another one. Oh. You know? Well, they they just have it down where five matches, two hour. I, I don't want to see another match because then it'll take time away from these amazing matches. There. Well, and I could see that because then when do they stop? You know, okay, well, now we got six matches. Well, let's make it go seven. And then it's at you you know, WrestleMania. Ki- like you said, that you got the Killian Dane riddle spot. Yeah. In place of whatever blank space yeah. they would have had. But I mean, I and that's the thing I like about NXT is that you got a two hour slot, you got five matches, you got a lot of time to work with. So really, you get a little extra freedom with your time. Yeah. It was a, I, like that riddle. But even. Dang spot was I mean, sick. they knew they were having an hour long main event, but they had four matches down and still an hour left. Not every takeover needs an hour long main event. You could have still. S- like squeeze two other half hour matches in right, there, right? And those are also to say long they, enough they, to be classics, you know. If they didn't have this hour long main event um, planned, then each match would have gotten ten extra minutes. Not each match needs ten extra minutes. I'm, but I'm, but I'm, I'm saying they would, they would differentiate the time. Like the triple threat match would have went a little bit longer because it's a triple threat match. Yeah, you know, like get what I'm and saying. Is it? That, is it? That, Cause I is it always five matches on NXT? Always, yeah, always five, yeah. always five. Really? Yep. It's normally so before they had the North. Because I feel like title. this is the first time I was like looking at the card and I was like, "Damn, there's only five matches. That's crazy." Yeah, well, yeah. The <clears throat> so now there's four titles, so it's four titles and a, a, a grudge, a, a grudge match. It used to be two grudge matches and the three titles. And sometimes 
some uh, sometimes it'll only be two titles and three and three grudge matches at some points. When I feel like the fact that Takeover is only for the big four pay per views, they could afford. They, this they ran a standalone one this year. They yeah, ran they uh, normally twenty five. Yeah. They normally run five, and the fifth one is Money in the Bank. Gotcha. So the big four plus Money in the Bank, and they oh, did right. kind of do that. They just did it a week earlier. Yeah, yeah. they kind of run five and maybe six. Sometimes they do a random standalone some for something. Yeah, that week earlier one that was a standalone one. Where they didn't do it on a weekend of a. Yeah, but they normally do it at Money in the Bank. They just did it the week before. Right. I think they wanted to do it on its own just to see how it would do. But that's also without the, piggybacking was, off the other pay per view. You know, I think it was also the twenty fifth takeover they've done. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's special, so they had they had to kind of differentiate it from where they usually put takeovers. That makes sense. Um, moving on. So Sunday. So what match got axed on Sunday? Uh. Alistair Black versus Sami Zayn, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but wasn't, wasn't, wasn't there Smackdown also though. supposed to be uh So it was supposed to be wasn't it supposed to be Roman versus Joe and then after he got hit by that card they kind of just didn't talk about it again? No, no, no. That they that was the whole he's about the whole Roman who done it. You can yeah, talk about were, more stuff that wasn't on that pay per view than than that was. Yeah, they, they Joe had well, no, yeah, there was there was after. definitely the um the Alistair Black Zayn match, right? And then there there was another one. I just can't remember. I thought I remember reading Rowan, not, not Rowan, Roman versus Brian was supposed it was to supposed happen. to happen, but they but they nixed that. They nixed that and just continued the storyline. Yeah. But there's one more. I I was watching Raw and SmackDown, and like two people came out. Oh, Andrade and Ray. Yeah, he's been ripping his mask off for mm-hmm. weeks, weeks, and they didn't do that at SummerSlam. Nope. So. Um, at any rate, SummerSlam was Sunday. We were at Buffalo Wild Wings in downtown Detroit. I was not. You were not. Um, but we knew about that a long time ago because you I were, was on BPT. Yep. Um, but it, it was a great event. Um, we had a really good turnout. Thank you for uh, for everybody for coming out. It was a really good time. We gave away a, a championship title. Uh, we were there with the Knockouts and Three Counts podcast. They gave away a bunch of stuff. We gave away a bunch of shit. Um, before we talk about the pay per view, w- one thing that really stuck out for me that was that was a really good moment of the night. I don't know the dude's name. Guy comes in. He's already wearing two different championship the North titles. American and the WWE. And we would raffle off the WWE championship. And he wins the title through the raffle. So now this motherfucker's got three belts. So that's how Scott is. Yep. So this guy decides to give his title to, obviously you guys know who this guy is, um, Scott. to his son. Yeah, our buddy yeah. Scotty's son. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, I mean, that kid's face lit up like a Christmas tree. He yeah. couldn't have been happier. And he already won a raffle prize earlier in the night. He, he's been to every big event we've done. Yeah. And he seems to have a riot. Oh, he did. He yeah. had a blast. Michaela had a blast. He, he won Any a couple kids shirts la- at our last yeah. event, and he loved it. He well, went- the one and the one was too big for him. It was like an extra large men's, and he was like, "Oh, I'll grow into it." <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> well, so yeah, he gave him the title, and it was great. But then a few minutes later, uh, I don't remember who it was. One of the kids, they were like, "Oh yeah, he, he said it's going to be the twenty four seven title." So Scott, his, his dad's name, yeah. he stood up out of his chair and snapped, and he went over to him and he threw him on the ground. And he pinned him, and somebody pinned him one, two, three. So he took the title from him, and then somebody tried to pin Scott and. You know, it was it's stuff like that that really makes. That was my first big event. Uh, with but it was fun, but it was a blast and, and stuff like that, especially for kids they, to have a good time like that. It's it you were, was. You weren't there awesome. for Mania. Uh, nope. It was right before he joined. When was right before he joined the show? No, he joined, no, he I, joined the show in January. No, my kid got sick for me. Oh, so, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, yeah, yeah but yeah. Nonetheless, it was a great time. Um, I think we did about fourteen hundred dollars in sales. Mikey said so. Um, you know, it was really awesome for the Buffalo Wild Wings staff. They were great. Um, service was great. Food was great. I had a blast. My girl had a blast. I brought a couple friends. They had never been to a big event like that for, for anything like this. So it was a really good time. Um, now, as, as far as the pay-per-view goes, um, I didn't get to watch it the way I n- would normally watch the pay-per-view at home, sitting down, focusing more on it, being able to hear the play-by-play unless. Your Z when you turn the shit off. 
I didn't turn it off. The way my service was working up north, it, <laughs> it would literally, like, su- SummerSlam, I was having that problem, that, like uh, Goldberg match, right? Yeah. Goldberg, like, Ziggler gets on the mic, and I wasn't even worried about listening until Ziggler picked up a mic and started talking. So I'd rewind it, and I'd get sound for, like, 10 seconds, and I'd cut back out but continue <laughs> to play the show, and I eventually got frustrated. I was like, fuck it, I'll just watch it without. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like it would be a little interesting to watch that the sound. I should yeah. sometimes the sometimes it's better. way better. Hold up, wouldn't mute it. Especially like you don't have to hear Michael Cole on Mondays. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, it, it was a pretty good pay per view though. I'll, I'll give it that. Um, wasn't my favorite SummerSlam, but I I did enjoy it. Um, what is your favorite SummerSlam? Like, uh, which one was it? I. I really enjoy 92 from Wembley <laughs> Stadium. What I was going to say, I was going to say 92 as well. Yep. That's um, a lot of people's favorite SummerSlam. Yeah. At any rate, um, Drew Gulak defeated Oni Lorcan in the, during the kickoff show. Um, Buddy Murphy defeated Apollo Crews, which I didn't really catch that match. I know it was on. I kind of just, I kind of just caught it like earlier today. Where... Um, WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. Uh, they were also on the kickoff show with Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross defeating the Iconics. Um, the Raw Women's Title was defended by the man Becky Lynch beating Natalia. Uh, the United States Championship match: AJ Styles uh, defeated Ricochet. Goldberg, of course, defeated Dolph Ziggler. SmackDown Women's Title match: Bailey over Ember Moon. Kevin Owens defeated Shane McMahon. Um, Charlotte Flair defeated Trish Stratus. 14 matches later, Kofi Kingston defeated Randy Orton in a double countout, which pissed me off. Um, yeah. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, defeated Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins Gained, regained the Universal regaining Championship. Gaining over Brock Lesnar. Um, so I, I want to start with... I want to start with... Um, the Fiend and Finn Balor, probably the most overthinking the whole show, and and I expected a squash. I you know maybe not to that extent, um, but I was really anticipating finally seeing what Bray Wyatt's character was going to be like in the ring, aside from the mandible claw and you know the sister Abigail. Yeah, um, entrance was for me. Entrance was great. The new take on his entrance music is phenomenal. Um, the people lantern were dogging that shit too. His entrance. No, I no people were no people were praising it or giving it way or over praising it. A couple opinion. articles I read, dude, people hated it. And I, and I uh, it's one of those things where I got frustrated. I turned it off. I'm like, I'll finish SummerSlam later. Yeah. So I hadn't gotten to that match yet. And was the Charlotte uh, Trish match that frustrated you? No, it was well, the whole. It was the whole sound cutting oh. out thing. So oh, yeah, eventually, yeah. I was like, "Fuck yeah. it, I'll watch it when I get home." Um, but so I'm reading. Like I, I knew all the results because I could check like CBS and they would give you like the live updates. Mm-hmm. And the guy who reviewed the match was dogging the entrance, and I was like, "Really? Like it's not like Bray to have a shitty entrance." Yeah. So then I went on. I went onto the interwebs. And there, were, there was a handful of people that were bitching up a storm. So now I'm like, I got to see this entrance, right? Like, how bad was it? Like, you know, I turned it on uh, today, actually, is when I had time to catch up. And uh, I turned it on. I'm like, I don't see anything wrong with it. In fact, I love it. Yeah. And then he's also the first wrestler to have a exit yeah. promo. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. And, and like I said, I thought it was great, too. I mean... I couldn't imagine him coming out to that Fireflies theme song the way he did with... Is that Luke Harper's head on the land? No, that's his. <laughs> well, that was what really set it off for me. When I saw that, yeah, I was like, like damn. that's that They shit, committed to this. I don't think intense. anybody knew. They that. went full gonna... Slipknot with that shit. Okay. Yep. And that got some, some, uh, that got some feedback, too, on the internet with people saying... That's a too African of an image for... Yeah. But you know what? From my understanding, they're they're sticking with it. WWE actually I pulled heard the that video. Got, I, I heard that that spot with the lantern head or whatever got edited out of some stu- some WWE yep. stuff on YouTube. Yep. So for me, I love it, and I hope that they stick with it. Um, but they gave it a fourteen rating. 
the whole, the whole SummerSlam was rated TV 14. So I'm like, I guess the graphic image was the one thing they were thinking of, of when giving it that 14. Ooh, I didn't rating. even check to see if Raw was rate, rated oh, TV yeah. 14. Um, but aside from that, the match, you know, he looked good. You can tell, you know, obviously he lost some weight. He looked a lot faster in the ring to me. Yeah, it's because um, of his little legs. Yep. <laughs> He's a muscle man dance. I got that. Uh, I finally got my tank top. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, the what little you, neck what, snap. What? That neck snap had me going like, oh, shit, he really just tried to kill him. Yeah, and I, it was funny because when he did that, I saw Joe and you were like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I thought it looked like shit. Yeah. <laughs> He killed him. Yeah. Oh my god, he's dead. That was, oh a, that god, was a sarcastic. He's dead. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah. On my part. Yeah. Um, he's broken in half. But I'm glad it was quick. I'm glad that he came out there and he, you know, he took a, a bump. But you know, Finn had a little bit of a comeback for a minute there. Yeah, for a minute. It wasn't a total squash. You could make it. Yeah, he was a total squash. You it wasn't like a they want to make squash. it. Look. But nonetheless, got squashed three times in like three minutes. Okay, so with yeah, that, that's a squash. With, with that, how did Z? How did you feel when Ziggler kept getting on the mic and talking shit, talking shit? You know, it's the same shit that Dolph Ziggler has been doing since Dolph Ziggler has become irrelevant. Um, should have been me. I didn't care for it. What was cool though? Um, I like the way he sold the spear. I hate the way that uh, Buddy Murphy decided to copy him on Raw, but it made it look better. Well, yeah, I like SmackDown. Mo- yeah, SmackDown, SmackDown. Yeah. Um, but whatever. I mean, it was everyone. Everyone knows, like a Goldberg match is uh, the clothesline, uh, maybe shoulder bump, and then spear jackhammer over. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was cool to see Zig. Like the beginning of the match, I was I was excited. I was like, ooh, he caught him twice with sweet chin music. Maybe they're actually gonna have a match. And I'm like, no, never mind. Thought too soon. <coughs> um, as far as Stop I, thinking, Z. He uh it got annoying. Yeah. See, th- I wasn't the only one that thought like it was like it got annoying. I felt like they were trying to fill time for no, some like, reason. Like, no, no. Just like why did you have to do it more than once? Right. That was the point I was getting at. Was like, Sorry. You cut me off. <laughs> a lot of that pay per view felt like it. They were trying to fill time Fodder. and kill time. But they killed two matches, so why did they need to kill time? It, and the thing ended at like 10.30. Because I think because normally, they killed normally, those matches. Normally it goes to like midnight. Well, at least 11. Well, no. like Dude, the they, were dra- going... they were lucky to get 10.30 out of it. Really, they could have streamlined that motherfucker to end at 10. But they were fucking drawing shit out. They and, were like say, that, that Ziggler part. Like after the first one, they didn't have they didn't have to do a second time. And then it, it got even more annoying when he did it on Raw with the Miz. Dude, but that's but he's been doing that. He's he did it uh, before this whole. He did it. He used to do it when he uh, used to do the like Naito thing where you come out to no music. You just hear like the DJ in the background. Naito has music. Is that Naito has music? Who who was it that used to come out to no music? In New Japan? Yeah. Man, I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to think about that. Whatever. Um, now, the another match. Chopper used to come out with no music at NXT, though. Kofi Kingston and, uh, and Randy Orton. Not a lot of buildup <laughs> on TV aside from the, the vignettes. Video packages? Right. Thank you. People <laughs> But yeah, I, I was thoroughly disappointed with that. Especially, I mean, I I went home that night and that I put that match on just fast forwarded right to the end because I couldn't catch. I know it was a double count out, and I, I got that when we were there. At first, I was a little confused because it happened so fast, and it wasn't as believable for me because of the fact that the count was a little faster and it was immediate. There was no. It, it wasn't a typical. Count out for me. Um, it's like Kofi snaps and he just lo- and, and, the, and, the, and the thing was lose, the bell rang count. after Kofi had snapped. Yeah. So at that point, I was thinking, okay, it's a DQ. Mm-hmm. And then it was like no double count out. But I mean, then he proceeded. And honestly, the match was like between the, those two guys. You have great chemistry. And that match wasn't even that good. And stupid. I didn't think that match was bad. It was like it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. 
like I said, just like just like when, just I kind of like, felt the same way about that one as I did uh, Undisputed Era and Street Profits. It felt like clunky and mm-hmm. not a lot of chemistry but between those is, guys. When those they, they should have had it. more chemistry. I, well, yeah, they, well, they, but it felt like they didn't in that match. And the way they built this match is by video packages and shit of eleven years in the making, right. like these two and all this heat. And That's stuff. why I was okay with the build. I thought the story right. was already built in. I right. the build did not but bother me. With two guys that have been rivals for eleven years, you want more than a clunky match. You you think it'd be? more I wonder fluid. if it's a political thing. I wonder if. Randy just didn't want to do the J-O-B to Kofi, and that was a way to keep them both looking strong because they couldn't take the title off Kofi, you know, or at least they weren't planning on it, and they weren't going to. So maybe that's just Randy not wanting to lose clean. We also know this feud is also going all the way to class champions at least. So this, if- How do we know? We don't know that. We don't know that. I mean, maybe, maybe now that that match didn't have a – proper finish but it's not like we all and we, even still we don't know that it's not and it's not like we all knew that beforehand i didn't anyway well, unless you knew I, something I, the rest I, of us I, didn't I, know the, the, the improper like the, the, unpro, uh, the improper finish and then everything happened on smack and i'm like oh this is at least going to class of champions that's some uh hell hell of a foresight you got there i could see that it's still a month away but that's James. Yeah, but still, they, you gotta start building sometime. Yeah, you get you need a better building. You have a SummerSlam. When I felt like Kofi's Why? last the story's already there. Why yeah, the do you really already, need to build for it? The story's already there. But like, did did the product of SummerSlam live up to the story? No, not the no. one they were trying to tell. No, there we go. Yeah, but now they're telling a story with these kids involved. So you think the kids make it that much better of a story? Mm-hmm. Make it a little bit more personal. It's already pretty fucking personal. I think it should have went there at SummerSlam because the fact, like you said, there's an 11 year buildup. Right. How many matches Why, have they that, had? That should that? be the SummerSlam's your number two pay per view of the year. It's an, already got an 11 year buildup. That should be the culmination of it. Why would you? Why would you just have a uh, you know a nothing finish at your big dog pay per view just to s- extend it another month to a sub a subsidiary uh, pay per view? Keep Kevin Owens away from the title. So extend the feud. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just want to get into Raw SmackDown because there's some of that stuff like the, the aftermath of SummerSlam is what's pissing me off. I didn't see much. Of, I didn't see much of SmackDown this week. The one thing I will say about SummerSlam, Raw, and SmackDown that changed this week that made the biggest difference for me is the camera work has been phenomenal. The new camera angles they show you on the weekly shows is great. Mm-hmm. Um, they, I, I mean, I don't. I, I totally didn't even notice it. No, at I, all. I did. I did. <laughs> next week when you watch, you be like, "Oh, I see what he's talking about." They do it more to an angle more towards the ring. So, like in the one match on Raw, when the ref didn't see or, yeah, Raw with Ray and Andrade, and Zelina gets the feet. Mm-hmm. They shoot the angle at a lower angle, so like you see Zelina and you see his feet, but you don't see the ref in the frame at all. That's true. So then you cannot argue that the ref could couldn't see, see it, it or didn't see it. Like the angles they were switching up to, like it's definitely I want to say an Eric Bischoff thing. That's literally back there. Like all right, cut to this one now. Cut to that one. Like because somebody else is doing it. Because before it was shit, and now it's gotten really fucking good. Yeah, so they're starting to pay attention more with the guys that are in the back, making sure. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I did notice because they were right behind Zelina while she's grabbing. And then they shot know. it like an angle yeah. from like the floor up to the curtain. Mm-hmm. Microphone Z. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But we'll, we'll get to Raw and SmackDown. Um, I, I do still want to talk about, obviously, we have to talk about Trish Stratus and Charlotte. Another match that I wasn't too entertained by. I mean, it was just kind of there. It was then it was drawn out, and it buried both title matches. Yeah. <sighs> that match was fucking terrible. Yeah. That match wasn't bad. It that was ma- terrible. That, that you watched was, it on mute. No, that match was, what does that have to do with <laughs> the match being good or bad? <laughs> Commentary made it worse. Well, okay, that's fine. It um, went on way too long. Yeah. I mean, clearly Charlotte was carrying Trish there, but for returning Trish and not having wrestled and really not being that great of a worker in her day, I think Trish did fine. She did as good 
as could be expected of her, which well, is she which was, is she not non soggy shit sandwich. I I mean it was it was a little hokey. I mean definitely some ring rust on Trisha's man, part. Man, I heard the guys on uh, Busted Open talking about her in this match, and they they talked about her like she was like top five performer of Ooh, all. Trish? Yeah, like what how amazing fuck? she was, and like there's only like three people on the face of the earth that could pull this off. She like, was at best. I know that was okay like, I was like, you guys, time. I was like, you guys are sucking some serious Trish dick here because th- this is not anything like what I saw. Like what I saw is Charlotte Carry carrying her yeah. 100% through that match. And what I, and the, and the guy is so funny. The guys on busted open, they literally said, there's only a few people in the entire world that could come back from a, 14 year old hiatus and and hang in the ring with someone like Charlotte. I was like, I almost puked in my mouth when they said Molly that. Holly. I was like, dude, sh- she did not hang in the ring with Charlotte. Slowed down about 80 percent to not make Trish look fucking stupid. Like she totally carried Trish throughout that. I mean, I was I sitting there. I think they put together a good I, match for what they were. I don't. With. I don't know if you were sitting with me and I my was. buddy Mike when we were watching this. Me, me and my buddy Mike just kept looking at her like. Dude, this is the drizzle. End this fucking thing. I really like tap the fucking pencil. Get this thing over with. Stop. I think it was one of the longest matches of the night. It was. It, it was, was like almost 15 minutes. Once again, it, it was, was longer long, than that, I think. Oh, I think it was almost shit. 20 minutes. It was dude. longer than yeah. both it of was your title matches. It was way too long, long dude. Matches. It was way too long. That, that Brock and Seth match went like 20 minutes. No, it didn't. It went 13. Look it up. It went. Yeah. Trish, Trish and Charlotte got more time than. All, Trish and Charlotte champion. went like 19, dude. I'm telling you, they're like the longest fucking match on the show, which is absolutely ridiculous. They went longer than all There's of the n- title matches. Just, I don't care if they're in Toronto, Trish's hometown. I don't care if this is Trish's swan song. Like, you don't make that fucking Ooh. attraction match like a shit show at best with Charlotte carrying, uh, you know, basically, no offense, but a washed up veteran who was never a great in-ring technician in the first place. You don't He's make that match. Work with. You don't make that match the longest fucking match on your card, dude. You just don't. That's just fucking dumb. I don't Speaking of pandering to Toronto, and we totally missed this, <clears throat> but uh, Edge has actually been medically cleared to compete, but both he and WWE don't, WWE. Don't, WWE. Um, don't want to take the chance of him being in a situation like he was so he's not coming back. But when he does do promos now, he can get a little physical, like you saw at SummerSlam. Oh, when he's paralyzed yeah. on a pre-show? Yeah. Yeah, I might just take, every, take shit from everybody over the last couple of weeks. Um. Yeah, so for those that missed that, Edge came out, speared the fuck out of Elias. And good night. Goodbye. Shout out to... Uh... To Mr. Xavier Woods for the Stevie Wonder look he had during SummerSlam. <laughs> that Slam. shit that was, was fucking hilarious. Sweet. And it kind of surprised me that he didn't have that on SmackDown last night still. I mean, that's a quick turnaround for because that's a that takes a while to pull that Dude, hairstyle. he actually pulled, he posted something on his social media about how uh-huh. long it took for him to do that. Uh, it, was, he, it was the whole process, but he sped it up to like a minute and a half or whatever. Yeah. And I've had but, braids in my hair and had beat, I actually had barrettes when I was like 16, but that was a... Weird face. The face, yeah. Uh, that takes about a good seven, eight, almost a work day. If you got enough hair. Fuck. I used to date a black girl. She would leave the girl. house at eight o'clock in the morning to get her hair done, and would not come home until like ten o'clock at night, and she'd be at the salon the whole fucking time. Like so, once again, depending on how much hair you got, the minimum a work day. Fuck. Um. Brock and Seth, SummerSlam. I had Brock winning that match. I don't know about I think the rest a lot of, of people yeah, had I Brock did. winning that match. We didn't get a chance to talk about that scorecard. Um, we did our NXT scorecards last week on the show, so um, Pro Wrestling Scorecards didn't release the SummerSlam uh, card until Thursday, the next day after our show. So we didn't get a chance to discuss our picks. So, yeah, you guys were all... I'm I was trying to look at all all your other guys' scores, but the it's not working correctly. Yeah, I could. It just shows I, I can click on it, like I can click on BDR Smitty, and, and it says his name, but it's still just all my <laughs> all my picks and my scores. Yeah, I have 
all the troubles in the world. I will say this. Uh, the winner of our uh, PW Scorecards contest at uh, BW uh, Wild Wings, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. B-dubs, uh, he had 112. I have a 119. So you're just lucky that you know we're yeah. not included in this because you would have got beat. I got, with, a, I got a zero. With that being zero. said, Anybody my that? my mother in law, shout out to my mother in law, scored a one thirty one. Didn't she do something like that on the yeah. last one too? What a couple is couple she some ago. kind of fucking? Why the fuck are you on the show? <laughs> like a rain <laughs> man? She's some you know, kind she, of fucking savant. You know, or something? we've been looking for a woman, a rain woman on the show. Dude. I came home and she was like, "I got a one thirty one. Why don't you? Why don't you just let her make your picks? Yeah, I was gonna say, why won't you just give her your? Then she should be you. Then he be you. Yeah. Why? You remember when we first started doing scorecards and you had the, the, the whole random BS picks? I thought about bringing those back, by the way. Like, I did bingo picks. I did <laughs> beer pong picks. I, I, w- I would bowl and whatever, like, I'd get it would be my pick. If I got a strike, I got the pick. Um, I've done beer pong for picks. I was I was going to bring that back. But I've also let Allie fill one out, one with her picks. But I got, I'm not as fortunate as you with your mother-in-law. <laughs> I got a 118. I know Smitty, you actually got 131 as well. Oh, fuck yeah, baby. I don't even know what I yeah. would have gotten because I don't even know what I would have picked. So, like, we all beat the highest score at B-dubs. Yep. That's as as we should. <laughs> so, what, what, so, what did Mikey get? Did Mikey, did Mikey, did Mikey, uh, Mikey got 128. Oh, wow. Now, NXT, so, on the other hand. Was he, we, I think, they're in cahoots. I, Your mother in law and I'm sure talk, they are. Huh? I'm yeah. sure they are. I, I'm like, who the fuck are you texting? Nobody. Nobody. Nick Shaw. Texas man, <laughs> um, who's the man? So, but on on NXT Takeover though, I scored sixty. I think Smitty, you were at 40, 44. 44. I was at I was at forty six. Forty six. Mikey got a thirty eight. We caught all eight shit on what I get? Takeover. Yeah. Um. I think you were forty. Forty two. So I was like a forty. Nick had the highest, which we all scored very low. And when yeah. Nick had the highest, was sixty something. So that yeah, should tell you how well we did. Yeah. Um, but at any rate, we're getting off topic. Seth and Brock, we all picked Brock to win I, w- I would have picked Seth, just so you know. I would have. You're a liar. No, seriously. Like, <laughs> no, no, the way they built the match, the way they beat him down, the way he guaranteed it, like, fuck yeah. it, why not? Seth Rollins. Yeah. Well, and he likes to pick one random one that they either makes him or break him on these court cards. That was going to be it. Yeah, nonetheless, Seth Rollins is your new universal heavyweight champion. Um, the match was okay. It wasn't bad. I enjoyed when Brock swung Seth around by <laughs> his fucking awesome. band. <laughs> <laughs> I think we that looks held, so we painful. Both, I think everybody there kind of held our ribs for like two seconds. Yeah. Like, that actually hurts. Yeah, that was a good spot. Um but and and then when Brock went through the table and Seth did the frog splash, that was great too. That was my favorite match of the yeah. night, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, I, what was the last time a Brock Lesnar match was your favorite match of the night? Don't know. <laughs> Says kind of a lot about the underwhelming SummerSlam card. That's another thing. Like I was listening to the busted open guys. They they called like this SummerSlam better than Takeover and like a home run, knock it out of the park. I'm no. like, dude, wh- you guys are shills, man. Like, who's paying you to say this? Like, WWE. You know, you're eating a shit sandwich. Yeah, you got Jesus. Mark Henry on your show. No wonder why you're fucking saying this, you know? Like, dude, no, it was not better than Takeover. It was and, not a home run. It was a man show. In fact, as far as it Summer was Sam's go, it's bottom of the pack. It's an, yeah. It was an... Uh, we were looking at the card, uh, me and my buddy Mike, filling it out at the bar. I'm looking it over like looks pretty underwhelming, huh? He's like, yeah, it really does. And then as like the night's going on, I'm like this, this card, this show kind of reflects the card. It's pretty underwhelming. And then like as the yeah, night goes, as the night goes on, I'm thinking to myself like, dude, they've got no men's tag titles on here. The IC champion. They got no they IC champion. The nothing. They they have they one show. women's tag match on the pre-show. No IC championship match, no men's tag belt match, uh, Raw or SmackDowns. You got no Samoa Joe, no Shinsuke Nakamura, none of your fucking tag teams. Okay, hold no on. Drew McIntyre, no Roman Reigns, no Rey Mysterio. This no Shinsuke Nakamura. This oh, is Friday. fucking SummerSlam. Where are your fucking stars? I, honestly, I think it had a lot. What the to fuck do is with that? Them having it in Toronto. <laughs> 
Like you I know, the, like you I know have the Usos, the Usos on it because couldn't get across the border. I get that. Yeah, but there's you, other tag teams besides the Usos, man. Right, but like Nakamura may not been able to obtain a work visa for Canada. I don't know about that one, man. I, just, oh, well, so what? So what about the revival? What yeah, about what about the revival? Why, I, yeah, why, why? Why were they not wrestling? I, I'm just saying it could have been travel problems. It could have been. I, we don't know. What the New was. Day were there. They could have wrestled. That is you know, true. Uh, they could have put some tag matches together, man. They right, could have put I'm plenty really, of matches really, together without the Usos. That was not loss one tag who match is on the card. IC title belt holder right now? She's Nakamura. 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 See, that's how that's how important that title is right now to the WWE. Right, but even mm-hmm. when Finn had it, they didn't really they show, didn't feature they, it. They didn't now, feature him. The IC is like what the US used to be now. Now like, really the roles featured, are reversed. They haven't really featured it since the Miz had it. They have not featured. I mean, it. not that it was all featured at that. And, and yeah, anyway, as the Miz always said, as Z just true, said too, when Finn it had it, they didn't do shit with it either. Dude. But you don't even see Finn on TV right. when he had just, it. You're yeah. barely seeing so Nakamura. It. Finn had the same run with the IC Championship that the major bros had with the ta- Raw Tag Team Championship. Oh yeah, and when they, they were not featured, but when you finally featured them, they dropped it. Yeah. Well, and my thing too is like, okay. And I can say the same thing for the Iconics, too. Dude, they could have had a whole nother fucking pay-per-view with everyone that wasn't on the fucking show. Like, and seriously. And it would have been yeah. better than and the And it would have been pay-per-view quality. That's the type of stars that they have on their roster that weren't even fucking booked. You- to me, that's absolutely ridiculous, and that's a fucking waste of money and talent. Well, not I'm only sorry, now, it is. Not only now you're fucking wasting the men's tag division, but you're wasting a women's tag division. You came up with these fucking titles and have done I, shit with them I, I think in the process. I think they're in the process of correcting that. They're in the process of correcting it because they put it on Alexa Bliss. Well, yeah, it'll, it'll showcase it more. It'll give her something to do with the title. But they've already defended them. Yeah. So, just, like, they've already have one under their belt as the Iconics didn't defend them, and when they did, they lost. Yeah. Well, I should have defended them once, and that's it. And they won, and they all lost by DQ. I mean, they all count out of DQ or some shit like that when they've been against the Kabuki Warriors. And, like, it's, I think it's amazing how, how like, actually, I want to finally got a chance to watch the pre-show, how amazing those women's tag titles got over mm-hmm. when they were actually featured on something. Yeah. The fact that the when Iconics, everything they did was via social media until like you saw them on SmackDown, no one defense. Like I said, when they won by when they lost by count out, but they weren't featured on, on anything for SmackDown. But when you featured them on Raw, they dropped the titles too. Honestly, I was a little bit pissed about Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross winning the championship because I want to see their story unfold. Just putting the, putting the tag the women's tag titles on them just seemed like something to give Alexa Bliss something to do, yeah. just so you couldn't break away from Nikki. Um, so overall, feelings for SummerSlam are a bit mixed. Obviously, based on on Joe's rant over here, which I completely agree with, we could have had a totally separate fucking card with way better matches, which says a lot about the product that we're getting right now. I said, I said meh. Um, moving on to I was real quick, like I was I was telling. Smitty, like, as we were watching this, like, you know, Paul Heyman is supposed to be taking over booking and yada yada over Raw. I, I told Smitty at the bar, I was like, this does not feel like Paul Heyman booking to Hold me on. at all. So, with with oh. that being said, I, I, I agreed with how you. How fucking terrible that was. Up to that yeah. point. Um, up to what point? Up to the main, not, the main event. not having booking power up till SummerSlam. Watching Raw and SmackDown. Kind of changed my mind on that. I was like, okay. I did maybe, hear something like he wasn't summer- officially taking over the book till after SummerSlam. Yes, yeah, and that makes a lot of But then a few weeks sense. ago, I also read something like, no, they he's starting. After- to, he's starting to put his hands in the booking now. Right. I think. I think Andrade is a good example. I think he started. So are the Good Brothers. Well, and Cesaro was getting a push there too. You know that was fucking Heyman. It's not really a push though. They just built him up getting, to get beat. He's getting featured more. They gave which, a few which, wins which is, to make him look stronger to get beat by Black. He was paired against Aleister Black because I was like. Both of these guys are kind of like on the up right now, and one of them's got to lose. It's the dumbest booking decision ever. Whatever. But after watching Raw and SmackDown, since we are, we're going into Raw, right? So after watching Raw and SmackDown, I was like, okay, this has a different feel to it. And a lot of it was the camera work I was talking about, it, but it was a little more edgy. They did think they, the matches on Raw and SmackDown were better than nine. Of the matches on SummerSlam. SummerSlam. Um, it, it feels like, from watching it on, on Monday and Tuesday, that they gave these guys, they're like, all right, 
So, like, when you're doing a promo, at this point, this point, and this point, kind of say what you want in between, and then uh, just go out there and do some stuff in the ring. And they were like, okay, cool. Like, they actually had, like, creative freedom to do more things in the ring. Like, uh, Andrade and Ray. Andrade and Ray had a two out of three falls match. Where Andrade did the Canadian Destroyer and almost killed Ray, it looked like. But I was like, and I I looked at, I... When he botched that spot, like the way Ray landed, I was like, and that's why they don't let him do moves like that. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray got right back up. Well, right, but I, but watching it, like you're like, oh fuck, like that's why they don't do it because someone could have gotten seriously hurt. But um, you can see, like right off rip, night and day, from like last week to this week, like Raw has been getting Raw and SmackDown have been getting progressively better. Also, the King of the Ring, but then like thing. it. It hit, and it's like, all right, cool. That was my next point that I want to make before I take off because I, I do have to leave. Um, so I've been watching Old King of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Like, I started back uh, before two pay-per-views ago, and I just watch them randomly. And I'm like, man, I really miss this tournament. Like, it was a really good show, especially when that's all they did. They, they, did, they would do the King of the Ring for a pay-per-view. And you do like the first round, and then you do like a tag team match, and then you do second round, and then like the intercontinental match. Or actually, this was the actual one card where they shove the championship match in the middle of the card because your main event was always the finals of the King of the Ring. Yeah. Well, then they shortened it up to where it was just like the final four, and then the finals of the pay per view, and they did a bunch of other shit. Then they took it off and made it strictly TV. When it went to TV, I, it kind of lost its luster to me because I didn't like the way they do it. Um, I'm happy they're bringing it back. I would love to see it as a pay-per-view, depending on what they do this week with it. Like, if they have four matches on Raw and four matches on SmackDown and then, like, lead it into, like, the next week or the following week and <clears throat> then, like, have the culmination of the finals at Clash Champions, that would be cool. That's that's what I read, and for those of you that don't know, King of the Ring tournament is coming back. You've got eight wrestlers from Raw, eight wrestlers from SmackDown, and yes, the finals are going to be at Clash of Champions. The other thing I was thinking, because I've had this thought about them bringing it back for a while, but I always thought it should be like, kind of like, you know, the World's Collide Tour with yep. NXT 205 Live and NXT UK? I thought it should have been a tournament like that to showcase like a newer, younger talent that like... All right, this kid won King of the Ring. Like, let's see what happens. But then I was also thinking, like, okay, if they do, if they get rid of it, maybe they should do a Queen of the Ring. Like, take all the way, yeah. and, and it would put major focus on the rest of the roster, not these f- five main people that you've been focusing on. But it'll give all the girls that want an opportunity or something at, at least a little bit of spotlight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm happy it's coming back. Depends how they do it, and uh, that's what I'm seeing guys next I, week. That's that's what I fear is that um, My... the current WWE will do what they do with every everything that's great. So real quick, what but is... if Heyman and Bischoff are really running the show and really doing stuff, like I am excited to see what they're going to do going forward. Well, especially with the winner of the King of the Ring, what are they going to get? You know what I mean? They've... No, it's not another bullshit King gimmick. All right, so yeah. like, here's the thing. The King of the Ring used to be, I mean, it, you're going to get a King gimmick, and spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure Ricochet is going to win because he's King Ricochet. Um, that or Corbin. Where, where has he been? He hasn't seen him for a minute. They just announced they announced they announced yeah, he's going to be in the, the tournament. They not announced a King of the Ring tournament. Um, but it never really led. Like Stone Cold was supposed to get a title shot, and didn't get a title shot for two years later. But it is what unprecedented what it does for people's career. Like, Owen Hart won it, and next thing you know, he was the IC belt holder and had a nice run with that and Itch, whatever. Kurt Angle. They, and they've been mentioning his name a lot. Yeah. Like, and I don't know if it's because it was in Toronto, Canada, or whatever, but normally, like, when it comes to stuff Owen has done in the business, they kind of, like, Ben Wyatt. Like, they just, like... You know, we're just not going to show this clip. This never happened. That's because of Owen's wife. widow, Martha. Right, but and that's fine, but they're showing his picture in this King of the Ring thing. They mentioned his name at SummerSlam. They mentioned his name on Raw. Like, they've been mentioning Owen Hart for 
really no reason. It's like last two weeks. Well, they have no reason to Chris Benoit or Hulk Hogan him. That's not that's not an onus I, from I them. I get it. That's an onus from her. There, and I think, but for the longest I think time, finally they're just like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> We we owned Owen's footage. He wrestled for us. We're gonna show some shit. Fuck this bitch, you know. <laughs> Which is great, and I really hope like that's what they're doing. And I'm really hoping all of this ends in like a Hall of Fame bid. But more so, I want them in the downloadable content for the video game. Unless I'm tired of going to create a uh, create a community. Well, sure, you can make the lately, blue blazer, no problem. Late, well, lately they've uh, the past couple of years, whoever the uh, Content creator? No, the whoever the like. I know what you're talking about. The Hall of Famer, like one year it was Kurt Angle, last year it was Goldberg, like this year it was Sting, like yeah. Owen Hart. The character you get for a pre-order or something. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah. And I mean, and then you just buy it two weeks after it comes out anyway. Yeah. Co- comes in a little seasonal pass. Not that I'm a wrestling nerd or anything. Nope. All right, see you guys. Later, pussy. Hey guys, it's been fun. Bye. <laughs> Later, man. This is a hate crime. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, the King of the Ring tournament is back. I am excited for it. When was the last time we had a King of the Ring tournament? Well, Way Barrett won it four years ago, five years ago. So almost yeah, longer than that. Longer actually. than that. So around 2012, maybe. Okay, that sounds right. Um, I said maybe because I'm not my not sure. Twelve, I'm thirteen. I do like. To Z's point, I like the idea of it being on a pay per view, but also um, the fact that it's sixteen guys. I, I don't know when the the last King of the Ring. I don't know if it was eight or sixteen. I, I couldn't tell you. It was like eight people, and it was, was like, it? It, and they did it in like two weeks. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I did briefly see some pictures of the guys that were in it, like uh, you said, Baron Corbin. Um, I saw Ricochet was on there. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe. Dolphin. Chad Pink. Gable. Yeah. With uh, Shelton Benjamin, so uh, it's a lot of guys that it, you don't see. Like they need some first TV round times. eliminations, you know. Yeah, so it, it'll be interesting to see, and I'm I'm excited to see what happens for the winner to see if maybe they get a title shot. You know, I'd... not it's like okay, so even if it's a title shot, don't put it like the King of the Ring is a way to give you a start giving you momentum to lead to a big title shot. Yeah, even if you just say King of the Ring and go for the make card title, mm-hmm. make the IC title relevant again. Yeah. Uh, go after the big, the big guy with a, with a, the one of a top star with a mid card set like AJ Styles. It's a good way to kickstart something bigger and get your name and make you an actual star in this company. And that's what I'm fearing with the with the current WWE system. Is like they, it seems like they say they want to build stars, but they don't. It's, they, they, it's they don't not make, set they don't up to build trigger. stars. They don't want to truly build stars. They don't want to be in situations anymore where... Like Cena and Rock? Cena and The Rock and Hogan and Stone Cold are bigger than the company and have leverage over the company. Vince doesn't want to play that game anymore. He wants nobody to have leverage over him. Right now, Brock Lesnar's got a little bit of leverage over Vince, but he lost some leverage now that he retired from UFC. So, you know, Vince does not like people having advantages over him. No matter how much money it makes a company, we've already seen that he does shit to cut off his nose to spite his face, you know? He does shit, to, you know, out of his own ego that's better for his ego but not as good for the company. We've seen it. Yeah, and I'm, that's why I say I fear what this tournament, what, what the tournament could do. Like, it has so much potential, but will it live up to it? Will it be another SummerSlam? I don't know about that, but I do like your idea of maybe not taking the winner of the tournament and automatically putting them into a world title picture, giving them a shot at a mid card title, and and having them walk around with that King of the Ring moniker and and not necessarily the King gimmick, but having them kind of like the best in the world with Shane McMahon, which I can't fucking stand. Oh, but using okay. King of the Ring is like you know Baron King of the Ring Corbin. I don't know why I said his name with that. I take it back, but you know what I'm talking King about. King Corbin. Right. You know what I mean? So um, moving on from that, Monday Night Raw, um, a lot happened on Raw, some good, some bad. Um, Sasha Banks, we'll just get it out there. Sasha Banks made her return. 
anybody expecting that at all? I mean, I knew that it was happening eventually. There, ca- I kept seeing rumors about her. Oh, she's in town. She's backstage. Blah blah blah. Here's her new blonde hair. Whatever. But you knew it was either coming SummerSlam or or post SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think I picked her as a unscheduled on SummerSlam. I so. did too. I figure, yeah, she'd be showing up sometime pretty soon. Her, I don't think I picked her for a SummerSlam. I think I, I, I figured she'd be post because they had so much going on with the women. Mm-hmm. So, so I, we're trying to Sasha would have probably buried almost anything, anything they had on SummerSlam. Yeah, Joe, what do you think about her as a heel? She is a heel. Yeah. It's about fucking time. Yeah. She's a terrible baby face. If you yeah. ever watched, she should of, never be a baby face. She's like, a heel in real life. Mm-hmm. She's a bitch. That's what I hear. She's so, unapproachable. And, no, she's not. Yeah. She, so she should just work that angle. Yeah. Work that gimmick. Work that personality trait. And then and turn wa- it up. And if you watch anything at NXT, she is not a, like she's an excellent heel, even like real life and on screen. Was she a heel in NXT? Yeah. Okay. Her entire run NXT, she was heel. Hmm. And she was um, absolutely amazing. And it started a whole ratchet thing, which was in. Yeah, that was hilarious. Where the, the NXT crowd would just say Sasha's ratchet, and when she f- start getting over, that's when the crowd would be Sasha's ratchet. And no, she ain't. And I'm like, did the crowd just say no? She ain't. Yeah. So, it, like, but she's she was an excellent heel. Like, honestly, I don't think Charlotte would have got over as much of a heel in the NXT if it wasn't for Sasha. I saw. Um, obviously, she beat the fuck out of Becky Lynch with the steel chair. I saw her get a lot of heat. For uh, a shot to the back of Becky Lynch's head with the chair, I saw a few opinions that said that maybe it could have been partly Becky's fault for moving in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, a lot of other people just going back to how Sasha botches shit all the time. I'm not one to speak to that, but yeah, um, it was nice to see her go heel. I- I'm on board with it. Hopefully, they. I found a King of the Ring contestants. They got them all listed already. I have it. Yeah, I have them all listed. Who we got? So for Raw, you have the Miz, Ricochet, Cedric Alexander, Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, and Cesaro. For SmackDown, you have Kevin Owens, Ali, Apollo Cruz, Chad Gable, Elias, Andrade, Buddy Murphy, and Shelton Benjamin. Hmm. Those are your competitors for the King of the Ring. Wish we could do like a pro wrestling scorecards with that hint. Or do a uh, well, the bracket's supposed to be coming out next Monday, so start so everything's supposed to be due next Monday, so the bracket should be out before probably by the end of the week. Yeah, be nice. Um, so yeah, Sasha Banks made her return. She got a pretty decent pop for that. A lot of people didn't expect it, and uh, when she came out in that purple wig, I was like, man, she looks like fucking shit. Like that is a terrible wig, but I knew after like three or four seconds, I'm like that thing's coming off one way or another. Whereas somebody rips her hat off, or it just she reveals her blonde hair, blue hair, whatever it may be. Um, Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe. Um, is, is Sammy, Samoa Joe's getting the same book and Bray Wyatt's got for years. He's gonna beat the nobodies. When you put him into a major feud, he's gonna lose. When That's I, what they do with Joe. It is frustrating because I like, let me take that back, I love Joe on the mic. I'm a fan of his in-ring work. He's a bigger dude that is very agile at times. Um, I do wish they would do more with him. And you said he's in the King of the Ring tournament. so He I, is in the King of the Ring tournament. I, I hope that he goes far. I really do. Um, Joe, you caught Raw, right? Uh, yeah, I wasn't paying too close attention to it. I, yeah. It's kind of on in the background. What's your question? Well, I was going to say what you thought of that Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe match. It was it was early. I probably didn't watch it intently enough to properly comment on yeah. it. I'll be honest with you. No, that's okay. Um, one of the matches of the night for me, Drew McIntyre and Cedric Alexander. Yeah, it was, so that was one thing this entire week that got me. Like Cedric Alexander's performance and Buddy Murphy's performance were mm-hmm. just phenomenal. You yeah. knew they weren't going to win, but just – the showing that both those men had was just like you can, fucking wild. You can't put the two face back in there. You, you got to do something with these two guys. You can get over without going over. Yeah, well, these yeah. guys did it. Yeah, it's you can, if, if you do it right, you can you can do that a lot. But the thing is, what was like after this whole this thing with McIntyre's over? Where are you going to put Seth? I don't know. What do you do with Sami Zayn? What do you do with Samoa Joe? 
Sami Zayn is a glorified fall guy. Let's be honest. He shouldn't be. Yeah, he shouldn't be. He's probably one of the. He's he's a really great in ring worker and yeah, he's, he's excellent promo, on the mic. Excellent too. on the mic now. Yeah, because he when he first started his mic work wasn't all that. But he was he was stifled. He was censored. Yeah, but now yeah, but I, I hate the fact that like you're using really you're using Joe as a glorified fall guy. You're using Sami Zayn as a glorified fall guy and. That's uh, oh, Elias another glorified fall guy. Besides what they did with him on Raw, just rant what they randomly did with him on Raw. They got nothing for him. Okay, they gave him the twenty four seven title for a minute, for a minute. But now next week he'll lose it. Yeah, guys this, like those are three guys right there. They just can't keep beating like they. These otherwise, their careers. I mean. They're just going to be pigeonholed into that fall guy, which the they J- probably J- already are. J- yeah. They're JT, they don't know JTG. Mm. I mean, you can't keep beating Joe like this. Like He comes out looking like a killer. Yeah. When he speaks, he's a killer. But then, like, he always gets beat maybe something that's a little uh, underhanded or caught him by surprise or maybe just, up. he's yeah. in shock or His something. Kryptonite. Yeah, like... The and then all, all of a sudden he he's like he's lost a match and he's sitting there in the ring with this you know shocked look on his like we can't keep seeing that same finish. Joe's got to win. Like yeah. you you got to put a title on this motherfucker. Like for real. Even if, even the one time he, you did give him it was he's a fucking one, joke. He's yeah. one of the only guys in the company that's really believable to take on Brock. I mean, I'm sorry. I know Seth Rollins won on Sunday night, but. That's really not a believable fight. Sure. You know, that's a that's a David and Goliath type situation, you know. With Brock and Joe. underdog story. You're talking about Goliath and Goliath here. This that's a that's a Godzilla big Haas, Kong. That's a big Haas fight. And like I know they had a little bit of a program a year or so ago, but Joe didn't do shit in that. He just took he was the fall guy in that. Yep. Like you know, like it wasn't a very long match, and he was a buffer yeah. for a Brock appearance. Yeah. That's literally what he was. He was fodder for a Brock appearance. Listen, cheers to the water. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm tired of seeing Joe. Like I, I enjoy some more Joe. I haven't enjoyed some more Joe since the TNA days. Yep. And actually, since the Ring of Honor days. Yeah. But he's obviously over with the crowd. Well, his body of work speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully we start seeing some more out of these guys. Um, well, this King of the Ring, let's say the King of the Ring is a great opportunity. Yes. We just listen to everybody that was there. Yep. Hopefully they don't fuck it up. Let's say, honestly, as much as I like the Miz, I don't want to see the Miz win. No. Because the Ray, Miz. I wish Ray was in the tournament. Well, we got Andrade. Like, honestly, that's the guy I would want to see win. I would want to see Andrade win, but I think it's going to be a guy off of Raw. It's either going to be, I think it's going to be Corbin or Drew. Well, speaking of Ray, two out of three falls match against Andrade and Raw, Ray gets swept, which is something that you don't see often anymore. Mm-hmm. You almost never seen WWE. And who was it? Was it Chuck in the back in the locker room? Charlie Caruso that was interviewing him real quick. And yeah, and it seemed like he kind of was concussed a little bit. Yeah, and he was really broken up about the loss and I'm with my family. Yeah, you got to do some family. Like I figure Ray may be concussed because he was it seemed like he was kind of mumbling into through that uh in that backstage interview. What are they doing with Ray, Joe? What, what's what's happening with him? I think they're building something for his son. Yeah, because he you know he mentioned the word family like three times. He's been taking his you know some pretty severe losses lately. Uh, like he said, he like he said whether it was I don't remember whether it was Charlie or another interviewer, but it doesn't matter. He said, you know, I've I've never lost two straight and two out of three falls ever. He's like, you know, it's, he's like, I got to, you know, think about my career and my family. I, I think they're, I think they're, they've got something in the works for uh, a program Dominic. for Dominic. Yeah. But also, also, I think I like, I kind of like what Ray is doing. It's like Ray's doing something that, that Bobby's felt like pa- that felt Paul Heyman. That's no, that's that's Paul Heyman. Like that Paul interview Heyman. that that Ray gave, that felt Paul Heyman esque. Also, like just the booking of Andrade feels Paul Heyman esque because Heyman has a thing for using his vets to help get over some of your younger stars or your newer stars. Like Andrade feels like a big deal now, um, going into this King of the Ring tournament. 
So he has multiple wins over Rey Mysterio. He's had great, even though he's had great idols with guys like Roman Reigns, like he's actually on a streak of actually winning. So yeah, uh, so yeah, it's, and it's something that you've not, you've not seen. I'm excited to see what they do with Andrade. Yeah, and this is the best, probably the one, some of the best mid card booking they have on Raw right now. I think he could go far in that tournament too. I really do. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, main event: Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. This is one of those things they actually did build through the whole show, but it just kind of disappointed because you kind of everything just kind of seemed telegraphed for what they were going to do. Yeah, it did seem a little lackluster. It, you know, I, I was a little. It was okay. It, it was okay, know. but who doesn't want to see AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins in the ring? Right. Um, but I, I do think the build up was there, but then it didn't live up to that, and that then, short hype. You know. And also, where the fuck did Braun Strowman come from? Oh yeah, at the end, Braun Strowman comes out and, and takes you know fucking everybody down with him. And for a second, I thought he was going to beat the fuck out of out of uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah, he gives him. He should have. Yeah. So honestly, I smell like a quick heel he- or Strowman heel turn within the next two weeks, and that's who Seth is going against that clash. Well, that's what I'm reading is that Strowman's next in line for for the title at Clash, and and now because he's the Beast Slayer, now he's gonna be the Monster Slayer. I guess. Is, well, yeah. are, are, are they gonna give him like the whole Spike Dudley gimmick when he was killing all the big guys in ECW? The Giant Killer. Yeah, Giant yeah. Killer Spike Dudley. Um, but I, I think I, I don't think they'll put the strap on Braun. I think it's oh, too Let's... little, too late for that. Oh, they've killed Braun Strowman's yeah. allure and gimmick yeah, I, uh, about six months ago. I don't think they've realized that, though. I think they still think they can present him as being some monster. Yeah. But in my mind, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Mm-hmm. After the feud with Roman was over, you kind of just, you let him sizzle out. You big showed him. He's a joke. Yeah. He's a cartoon. He's throwing grappling hooks. Why do they have grappling hooks in production trucks? I don't know. Yeah. But... <laughs> Apparently it's it's a proper tool. It's a common tool for uh, rigging and stuff. Anyway, you know he's he's throwing grappling hooks, pulling down walls. He's tipping over semis and ambulances. Getting electrocuted. You know, you can't just throwing the back of garbage trucks. You can't, he can't just like forget all that hokey ass fucking tickle butt shit happened, and just you know sweep that under the rug. And now he's a serious monster. Like no nah, man. Like honestly, you the can't last, do that. It, that don't work that way. About dude. the last right. what four or five months, he's been nothing but a catchphrase. Yeah, get these hands. Literally. But I think they are seriously trying to give him the monster push right now. And like you said just a minute ago, Nick, too little, too late. Yeah. Move on. He's not the guy. Or else if he was the guy, you already, you you fucked that up for him. Yeah. You know, with your stupid cartoon booking. A year ago he should have been, and it would have worked out perfectly. So it might not even be Braun's fault. It could be booking's fault. But either way, he's not the fucking guy anymore. Yep. Um. Go ahead, Smitty. Listen, they were still on that damn Roman experiment, trying to make Roman a top, make him the top guy for everything. Yeah. And you had the hottest thing under your nose. You just never pulled the trigger with it. Um, moving on to SmackDown, we saw Kevin Owens at the beginning of the show come out to the ring. And, you know. Crowd pattern, let's be honest. Yep. And then, of course, here comes Shane O'Mac. <sighs> yeah. There's a lot of people very unhappy with that, as you can clearly see on the show. $100,000 fine for Kevin Owens because he attacked an official being Elias at SummerSlam. Whatever. Um, Is it the same uh, phantom $100,000 fine they gave Lars Sullivan? (laughs) Yeah. Shit. Like, can we just be done with the Shane McMahon shit? Like, seriously. I know, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, so, if, like, if Kevin lost, he had to quit. If Shane lost, nothing, right? Nothing. That's cool. Great booking there. Right. Like, no, if Shane lost, he doesn't get to come on TV and, you know, make the fans roll their eyes anymore. But no, 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 none of that. So the only bright side about this is you have a heel with legit heat on them. Dude, if they think they're going to try to recreate Stone Cold and Vince with Kevin and Shane, just just stop right now. Stop it. Fucking stop. Listen, listen, but we got to be honest with ourselves. Shane's probably got the most heat of any heel in the company right now. 
That's not, dude. Is that good heat? That's go away heat. That's not heel yeah, heat. That's get the fuck out of here heat. Yeah, but, you're, but it's, it's heat nonetheless. Not, it's not good heat. It's not the heat you want. You're right, but it's go. It's it's they're booing you because you suck. They're not booing you because you're a heel. They're booing you because they don't want to see you. They're gonna want to turn the shit off. Yeah, they're not booing you because they want to see you get your ass kicked. They're booing you. Because, yeah, they want to change the channel on your ass because you're not fucking entertaining. I booed, and they're sick of you. I booed Vince because he was a fucking piece of shit, but it was great. It, it was perfect. It worked. But I didn't want to turn the TV off because I didn't You want to see Stone like Cold get to him. Yeah, right. you, you want to see Vince get his ass kicked. Nobody cares if Shane gets his ass Nobody. They right. just don't want to see him. Right. Shane always gets his ass kicked. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Shane's he's, he's a one-trick pony, man. Yeah. Um. SmackDown was okay for me. Um, I saw like barely. Buddy anything. Murphy. I didn't see the Buddy Murphy. Okay, so Roman. Yeah. I didn't see the only thing I really wanted see, to see. You from two, it. So you two will, you will, are the first people to hear me say this. My highlight of SmackDown you need was to sit a down Roman Reigns Buddy Murphy match. Wow! I heard it was pretty awesome. It was. Like I said, I've mentioned it earlier. Like, we knew that Murphy wasn't going to win, but this was a coming out for Murphy on yes. the main roster on SmackDown. Buddy Murphy was physical. He was aggressive. He actually, like, he made Roman like a bitch half, to, half of that match. Well, I think there was even a spot where Roman was like, you could kind of see him on camera, and they made a point to mention it. You know, who is this guy? You know? Yeah, like, Buddy Murphy's whole gimmick is the best kept secret. Like, mm-hmm. no, the secret is out, bitch. Yeah. Buddy Murphy is here. And you got to do something. With, I just hope and pray to whatever deity you want to pray to that they do something with this guy. I don't care if you put him inside of a triple threat and he ends up taking a IC championship. And actually, I think he'd be a great heel IC champion right now. Yeah. Like, they're not doing shit with Nakamura. So, go ahead. Throw Ali, Murphy, and Nakamura together at Clash. And have Mur and surprise the world have Murphy take the IC championship and let him run with it. His yeah. in ring work is great. He obviously can cut up, can do a promo work and with in the back of what he's done with um, what he did with Roman last week and what he did with Brian and Rowan this week. That he's got what it takes to actually be. I don't see him as a top card guy, but he could be one of those guys that could be a solid top guy in the mid card. I mean, shit, dude. They call him a cruiser. He looks like he's fucking two forty. Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> actually. So the funny thing about so the, re- the reason he's he's he, he don't look like so, no fucking cruiser. So the funny thing to is me. Like, even when he was doing the cruiserweight stuff, he was always on the cusp. He was mm-hmm. all, like, so there were some t- certain points. Where, yeah, they got like he's on the borderline two hundred five. Shit, two forty five. Look at that motherfucker. Yeah, so the, the, the motherfucker. The motherfucker is probably like two twelve. Let's be honest, two twelve, two twenty ish, and that's mostly muscle. And the, the way he moves, like, holy fuck. And like, I got to give it to Roman, too, because Roman sold Murphy like a million bucks. And Murphy sold Roman like the million bucks WWE wants to believe him to be. And I'm not saying that Roman is bad. Roman, this match was probably one of the best Roman Reigns matches I've yeah, watched. Good. And that spear was great. And I, like, like Z said, like, uh, nobody, so like uh, he said Murphy copied... Ziggler on that on that spear. So I'm like, no, Murphy made Reigns' spear look killer. Yeah, it looked more believable when Murphy. Yeah, he was like, he, you really like when this, even when Kyrie like, oh, the spear cut him in half. Like, oh, maybe it did. Yeah, that match had me out of the commentary. And yeah, and I uh, hope Mikey's still watching him like this, so I can say, fuck you, Mikey. Yes, I admitted I liked the Roman Reigns match, and it was great. And it was worthy of the main event of SmackDown. <laughs> I do hope that they do something decent with Buddy Murphy and, and put him into a good mid-card picture. And, you know, I, I would love to see him with Nakamura. And Ali in a triple threat. Yeah. Because that would probably tear, like, that would be probably one of the highlights of Clash if that actually happens. It's like, and at this point, he had his coming out with Roman. You could easily get him some momentum over the next two or three weeks into... A program because obviously they're not doing it through like because all the championships on the line, they're going to throw Nakamura somewhere. And right now, they have in a BS view with Ali where Ali's begging for title shots, yeah. And they're not even featuring it on TV, no, it's all featured in social media. Mm-hmm. 
besides the whole Smackville thing where it was po- originally supposed to be um, Balor, but Balor wasn't medically cleared. Yeah. So Ali stepped in. Um, main event of the night, New Day. It was going to be Xavier Woods and Big E um, against the Revival. And then all of a sudden Randy Orton intervened and got Kofi Kingston shit. And then it turned into a, uh, a six-man tag match. Um, the match itself was pretty solid. Uh, at the end, Randy Orton ended up RKOing the entire everybody. <laughs> um, which that kind of leads me to believe that we will see Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston become class champions. Um, well, uh, again, they, they're going to drag this out. Yeah. And that needs to be it. Like we said earlier in the show, it should have been it at SummerSlam. But, you know, they got to fucking overdo it. Yeah, but th- what do they have for Kofi outside of after Orton? That's was the real quest. Like I can, that's the one reason. That's the only logic I can give him. Like, what do you have? For, like, if he did win clean at a uh, SummerSlam, what's next for Kofi? Yeah, he's like, probably been the strongest book champion that you've had in a while since AJ Styles. I feel like they might be saving that title change though for for SmackDown on Fox. Yeah, but once again, to who? Orton's probably, unless you can build another heel like r- within the next two months. They're going to get Brock on SmackDown somehow. Yeah. That's how. That's yeah. how he's going to lose it. Which I can see, but once again, yeah. Brock shows up at special events. And also, I told, oh damn, October is also that um, Saudi show. Oh yeah, that's towards the middle of the month, I think. So have him show up on SmackDown, uh, move to Fox, and. You got him for another. You probably got him for the, pretty much the whole month of October. Yeah. Um, we dove a little bit into the Roman Reigns investigation of you know who's trying to hit him with the car and push over the, you know, shit the backstage scaffold. and the scaffold and whatever. Um, uh, Daniel Bryan and Rowan, they they flat out came out and said it wasn't us, and we're gonna prove it to you tonight. So they go in the back and they get in Buddy Murphy's shit after his match. Pin him against the wall, much like Roman did the week before. And he had a smirk on his face at first that was like, you know, Daniel Bryan was trying to get in his face and say, tell them it was a lie. Tell them it was a lie. Anybody can be pressured when you bully him. Right. Yeah. And so eventually he did say he lied. You know, ultimately that's that was what happened is he lied. Um, and then at the end of SmackDown, we see Daniel Bryan and Rowan Facing off against Roman Reigns in the locker room, and they're going to prove it to Roman Reigns next, next week, week that it wasn't them that caused all the chaos. Okay, by the way, that cliffhanger ending, that screams Bischoff. Yeah. I feel like Bischoff actually put a little bit of a finger in SmackDown this week. Bischoff's not supposed to be handling the booking on SmackDown. He's supposed to be handling, like, the TV deals and corporate bullshit like that. But- shit that he used to do with fucking Turner. But that, but that don't. But what that way the SmackDown ended this week does not is not something that been happening typically, especially on the SmackDown show in years. When's the last time we had a cliffhanger ending like promo, like backstage cliffhanger ending on either show? Hell, I can't remember, man. Yeah. I forgot last week's wrestling when I watched this week. You know, <laughs> fuck. there's but, like 17 hours a week of wrestling to watch. That was a so that that was an interesting way to, to end the show and like. Once again, I'm gonna gotta take this down. Roman Reigns is who done it angle. It's probably one of the best angles in the company right now. Yes, I've given Roman Reigns two compliments just on this show. I don't know if I'm necessarily ready for it to It doesn't need to end yet. To to end. It's not one of the best angles for me in the company. Don't ask me what is right now. I, I said really one of think about it. yeah. But I'm interested. I thought it was Rowan. I really did. Or Daniel Bryan. Are are we gonna see a split? It, it come out to it to it being one of these guys, or is it gonna be somebody else? How for, how long is Lars Sullivan out? Uh, at least four months. So oh, yeah. this injury? No, six six to nine months, I think, from what I saw. Oh, so we like maybe a month or so. So I was like, you could have made a surprise return for somebody. Yeah. Right, he just did it because he's racist against Samoans. Yep, you know, he hates him. Right. Hey, I don't give a f- <laughs> Whoa. Well, there's a lot of racist son of bitches out there. Hulk Hogan, nigga. 
<laughs> um, with that, I think we're going to be done. Um, That's a great, great cue to sign off. Uh, good show. Z had to bounce. No Mikey this week, but Mikey will be back next week. Um, we're going to StarCast. We're two weeks out. Two weeks as of tomorrow, we will be in Chicago, Illinois for StarCast 3 for All Out Weekend. Breaking Down the Ring is going to invade the shit out of Chicago. We're all going to be there. Um, if you're going to be in the area, make sure you the check out penetrating Star, StarCast. Come check out our booth. We're going to have a lot of shit for you. Um, come talk to us. Chill with us. Talk some wrestling. Make fun of Smitty. Eat his mayonnaise. Whatever you got to fucking do. Um, Smitty's meats. Come on, man. Smitty's now. meats. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then we've also, if you go to our Breaking Down the Ring Facebook page, we also have events set for Clash of the Champions and Hell in a Cell, Hell in, a Cell in October at Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, so go also, and... We have Survivor Series, I believe, too, he said. Did he put the Survivor Series said, event up? He said next three, I believe he said. If they are up, just go to our Facebook page, check it out, like our page, show interest in those events, come on down to Buffalo Wild Wings and these next, because it, it's a blast. Fucking blast. Um... But yeah, I think that's that's really about it for your ring crew. That nigga Smitty. Whole F and Joe. And Mike Z. That works. Smitty. Z. <laughs> and uh we'll see you guys next week. We are out. Uh, I got through most of my notes. Only thing I didn't get to was the random stuff I wanted to get to. Well, I'll be dipped. Yeah, I was like, today I'll was, be dipped. So today was actually the birthday of both Kofi Kingston and Johnny Gargan.